This time on Rad Rat Video, we're going through a build log of me building a freestyle skate park. Let's get to it. Welcome back to Rad Rat Video, where you can learn a lot about skateboarding, although probably not this time, because I'm just going to be showing you a project I'm working on. I'm building something called the Freestyle Skate Park, which is just a ridiculous way to, say, a small flat patch of ground, because um, that's usually all you really need for skateboarding. So, at my house here, you flip around, I don't have any pavement. And earlier, I posted on Instagram, me skating on this little board right here, uh, which is not all that fun, believe it or not. I got a quote for building a patio. I put my GoPro on there uh, to have this all paved, like 10 feet of this all the way down. And that was gonna be $4,000. Um, maybe it's worth it, because then I could put in a box or a rail or something. That'd be pretty cool. Um, but I think $4,000 will go a little bit further in other kinds of projects. So here's what I'm building. I'm gonna have an eight by eight uh, platform, um, like a dance floor type of thing, and then I'm going to be able to skate on there. That's not enough room to actually roll back and forth and do tricks, unfortunately. Uh, I wanted to do it twice as big, have it be 16 feet, but even 16 feet is like not enough to do a push and then a trick and then actually roll away. So I'd have to do another 8 feet, I'd probably, you know, I'd go way out there, have like a 24, whatever. I'm going to start with this, see how that feels. I can always go to a skate park or something if I want to uh, just do more, but it'll be something I can do without having to leave my house. So let me show you what I got. All right, so this is my haul from uh, Home Depot. I had to have them bring it to me because my car is too small to bring home plywood. But anyway, I got uh, 10 2x4x8s. They are ground treated or whatever that's called, where you can put them right on the ground like for building a deck or something like that. They're red, but I believe that they're fake, like they're not actually like redwood. They want you to think that though. I've learned a lot of deception in building stuff. For example, here's a fun little nugget for you. I wanted plywood that was about three quarters of an inch, so I'm like I don't have to worry about my wheels poking through it. Um, I would have picked better plywood if I could have picked it in person. This kind of looks like crap and it's already got splits in it and stuff. But here's a fun little nugget for you. I went with 23 30 seconds of an inch, which is 0.71 uh, of an inch. In fact, let me prove that to you. See, 23 divided by 32 is 0.718. Um, that should be 0.72 of an inch, but guess what? It's not. It's actually thickness 0.688 inches. Um, so I don't know. I think it's like how a two by four is neither two nor four. It's an inch and a half by three and a half inches. So 23, 30 seconds. Although that's ridiculously specific and infuriating to try to work with. Like metric, come on. This is this is just stupid. The amount of fractions we got to use. But it's not even right. So that's my first frustration of the project. Um, here is the layout of what I'm going to do. So I planned all that out. Um, I thought about adding a second part over here so that my landing area would be wider and I'd have a spot to just do a push and it wouldn't take up quite as much wood and effort, but I kind of set that aside for now. So 10 2 by 4s um, and then cut in various ways. So that's what I'm going to be doing next. I marked these up to cut different spots so that I'll know and I'll be able to build all the platforms. Thing is, I don't really have any tools or anywhere to go uh, to do this stuff. I have a circular saw, uh, which my dad bought while he was here to put in some trim. So I've got that. I'm gonna balance these boards on a garbage can or something, and then uh, run the extension cord out from the window, I guess. That's my plan. We'll see how it goes. All right, here's the setup I came up with. I don't have any um, saw horses, but I do have two chairs. Um, there's my saw, extension cord running from the house, my microwave is usually plugged into that, it's the only heavy duty gauge one I have. I got boards that are marked up, and I'm going to try to chop them up and see what happens. I probably should be supervised for this because I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, my dad and I did make a mini ramp years ago, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to give this a shot and see what happens. Wish me luck.
I'm not entirely sure what happened there. Cutting along to the end, it didn't cut the very bottom corner here and then jumped and skipped back. Um, I think it's because of the way that it's balanced. As soon as it gets close enough to fall apart, it jumps and then it pinches the blade, but I don't know what else I can really do about that. So I'm just gonna hope. So after the saw jumped like that and made that extra cut, um, it did skip a little bit the next time. Well, the time after that. The next time I just went real, real slow, supported the side that was gonna fall, and it was okay. Second time it jumped a little bit, but that was the only one that was actually kind of bad. But here is where we stand right now. So, if you weren't sure what I meant before, this is basically gonna be it. Uh, kind of like a flat bottom of a ramp. Um, so I'm just gonna have all these supports. Screw them all together and put the plywood on top. And then I wanna put some kind of uh, sealant or something on there. Uh, the big problem is gonna be that it's not gonna sit level. Like, even as it sits here, it, it feels like it's way off. In some spots, I promise the numbers work out. But, um, so I'm probably gonna have to get some bricks or something like that to, you know, put them in different spots for support and make sure it actually stays flat, because that's kind of a big deal. But uh, for now, for today, that's gonna be it. I will cut to the next day whenever I get a chance to work on this again uh, to start actually putting it together. All right, day two and step two. Oh, I've got my computer glasses on, whatever. Um, next step, I'm going to start screwing together all the boards. Uh, I have a, a square. I have a bag of deck screws and I've got a drill. Hopefully that will be enough. It would be nice if I had a flat spot to do this, like a driveway or something, but if I had a flat spot or a driveway, I wouldn't be building this. All right, I stepped back in the house because wind was going to sound terrible, I'm sure, but uh, I just wanted to tell you the story of how I uh, dealt with the Home Depot guys when they brought the stuff. So they gave me a window of 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Now, a lot of times that's reversed, like 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., but I swear it was 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. that they might come. Uh, it's a 14-hour window, so I couldn't just be ready the whole time, all day, right? So I'm just going about my day like normal. I, I hop in, in the shower, you know, whatever, no big deal. And then the doorbell rings while I'm in the shower. Of course it does. So I've got to hop out, throw in a towel real quick, and run to the door before they leave. I don't want to miss my delivery, and then they got to come back tomorrow and charge me extra or something like that. So what are the chances that in a 14-hour window, they come while I'm in the shower? Well, I, let's assume it's a 14 hour sh or 14 minute shower, then the chances are one in 60. And yet that's exactly when they showed up because of course they did, because it's me. So anyway, back to work. Well, that was annoyingly difficult. Uh, they didn't want to stay together. And then I feel like I should be pre-drilling all the holes. But I've got to do at least 50, I think, well, maybe more than that. I think maybe like 60, 70 screws that we have to put in. So I don't want to have to pre-drill all the like starter holes and stuff. I got that one to work after a couple of tries. Um, hopefully it goes a little better from now on. Okay, so that went all right. The first one was definitely the worst one. I know a lot of you are probably cringing at my techniques of how I actually did that, but I don't have a lot of stuff. I don't really know what I'm doing anyway, so there's no doubt most of it was wrong. So my next step is to screw all of these supports to the uh, frame right here, and then the first support in the middle to that. Uh, the reason there's two is so that the plywood has a full lip all the way around on each side. And then my next step will be to screw this support to those boards, but like separately, and then place it all in as one piece. I think that's my best bet, but uh, I guess we'll see. So this is an eight foot long board. I have six supports counting the, the edges, which means I have to space them out at 16 inches. So I put a little line every 16 inches, which will be roughly accurate. The ones on the end will be slightly closer because it's measuring from the outside edge, not the center, but who's counting? Okay. 
So I realized that although 8 divided by 6 is indeed 16, um, I actually need 7 boards to contain 6 spots. So I'm gonna have to scrounge up another 2x4 and cut some pieces. Let me get as far as I can with this right now. I do see work emails coming in. So I'm gonna get as far as I can right now and then I'll worry about that later. So I'm now down two boards, unfortunately. What I'm gonna do is screw the other side on. I marked it again to make sure that all the boards stay straight. Got some junk wood over there. I will make do. I'll make two more um, pieces. These are like ground contact rated and all that kind of stuff. I don't know what that junk is, but whatever it is what it is. Uh, I have two good choices here. There's this one. Um, this is, unfortunately, I need 45 inches, uh, 3 foot 9, I believe. This is 43. This one is 47, uh, which is good, but it's got these corners cut out of both ends. Um, I don't know why this was just in my backyard when I bought the house. I do have this stupid thing, uh, which is another thing that I found uh, in my backyard. I think it was supposed to be like a planter or something like that. It's a standard uh, size board. It's a two by four, like a one and a half by three and a half, not old enough to be an actual two by four. So my goal is to try to take this apart and I can use the long side, cut that to 45 inches, probably have to use one from each side and then I'll be back in business. So I got some pretty good screws out of that which is what uh, your mom said when I dumped her. Um, so I might be able to use these if I run out. I think they seem pretty good. That board was fine, although the end split when I pulled the screws out. Um, so I'm probably gonna have to cut off the end and then cut off the next 45 inches after that. But we'll see how that goes. All right, so I'm done cutting all the boards. I replaced the two that I miscounted for. Um, and it did jump on me again when I was cutting. I don't know why it keeps doing that. This time it splintered the board and it pinched my finger pretty bad. Um, luckily on that one, I had 45 inches on one side, 46 on the other side. So I was able to just slice off the end. I mean, it was like 48 or something like that. Slice off the end a little bit so that I have two cleaner cut sides. Now I'll give you one pro tip. Don't listen to anything else or don't emulate anything else I do because I don't know anything I'm doing. But I will give you one tip and here it is. On this second board that I just put in, this is just sitting there, it's not screwed in yet, I have to tick mark all of where the boards go in. So the way I'm doing that is I'm just putting it in there and I'm going to copy the, the other side, that's it. Um, I could do it with the tape measure, I have to subtract out uh, three quarters of, of an inch on each side and all that. So the tip is to actually measure as little as possible. If you could just line stuff up and mark that's better because things aren't going to be square, things are going to be perfect like you think they might be. Um, so sometimes the eyeball it method is actually better. Now I'm going to take this board back out, I'm going to screw these on this way, that way I have the backs of the screws, like this is screwed in this way, this is screwed in this way, I can't put it in first and then screw all the way through both at an angle or something weird like that. So. Okay, phase two went uh, pretty well. So I split up the, sorry about the train, um, I split up the two crappy boards. I want the middle to be as strong as possible because that's probably where I'm gonna spend most of my time. Um, there's one that has a little bit of a gap. Um, for the most part, if there was a gap, as I tightened it, the board just bent and filled it in, it was okay. Although I feel like I maybe should have done the middle first. So there's a gap here too. You can actually see the screw there a little bit. Um, but, whatever. I am satisfied with it. I think it's gonna work okay. Next step, drag the plywood out here and see how it all fits.
So everything is in place, it's essentially done. I just have, the screws that I have are a little bit too short. Uh, they're like an inch and a quarter, I think. So it's like a 0.6 thick plywood. So it's not going that far in. So I only put in the corners and two in the middle. Just to hold it down for now, I gotta go buy some more screws and then some kind of outdoor paint or like deck stain or something like that. But for now, I wanna just actually skate it. So I picked a trick that was probably a little bit too hard for the first thing I ever do on it. That's called a right guess flip, by the way. Um, but definitely works. I'm worried about chipping and stuff like that. I definitely gotta get some uh, sealant on it. I'm probably gonna head to Home Depot right now. Not gonna paint it tonight because the sun's gonna go down any minute. So um, I guess I'll finish it up tomorrow. Here we are at day three of this two hour project. Um, this video is brought to you by Lowe's, not in the sense that they sponsor me, but in the sense that I've been there twice. Um, also Ace and Home Depot. And this is like a nothing project. Um, last night I went and I bought some screws for wood, wood screws you might say, and a new bit for my drill. Like the, it's not a bit, but you know, like this screwy part. Um, bought that new stuff and I figured I'd throw some screws into the plywood to really secure it last night, but wasn't gonna film it because it was getting dark out already. And it was probably the hardest part of this whole thing. Um, for some reason, I stripped six of those screws. Um, yeah, um, these screws are terrible. Um, it's a new bit, it's wood screws and it's wood. I won't focus, but you can get the point. Um, and not only did I strip six of them and get them out, there are two that I didn't get out. Over there and over here. What are you barking at, punk? Jake, cut it out. So I didn't like that at all. All right, I put Jake away. I hope that raccoon doesn't jump the fence and try to kill me. I don't think they're known for that, but you know, whatever. Anyway, so I got those two screws stuck. They won't come out. So I go inside to grab some pliers, and guess what? I don't have pliers anymore. Um, I searched the whole house, searched my basement, I searched my garage, I searched uh, where all my skate stuff is in case I used them for whatever. Don't have pliers anymore. I don't know where they went. I think maybe my ex-wife stole them. Um, or I just lost them, I don't know. So I bought a four pack and hopefully one of these will work to yank out this stupid screw. Let's find out together. So out of about 20 wood screws that I put in wood, eight of them stripped. Um, the uh, good screws are at Ace. Lowe's has screws that are probably plastic underneath a fine layer of metal because they are just garbage. Um, but anyway, the next step is to stain it, which I bought some stain when I was at Lowe's last time. I was gonna try to find paint, but there's nothing that was okay for decks, and I guess this is sort of a deck if you don't think about it too much. So I gotta do that, and then I have some uh, wood filler to fill in some of the knots and crap like that. The minimum temperature for applying deck stain is 50 degrees, so I am good. I just gotta stay 50 degrees for four hours and then cure overnight, but whatever, let's do it. And so here we are, it's been 26 hours of curing. It doesn't look great, um, there are some streaks and stuff like that. It said you can only put one coat on um, for whatever reason, so I was very generous with the amount that I used on that one coat. 
and uh, yeah, it's okay. I rolled around a little bit on it, and it's really slick right now, which is kind of cool if you're gonna try to land stuff in reverse for freestyle. Not great, trying to catch something in Casper, then it slides away. Not all that awesome, but maybe it'll wear out with the sun baking on it or something. And so the final step is to actually do some tricks on it, and test it out, and to do some sick tricks, I brought with me nobody. I gotta do them myself. Unfortunately, I'm very tired, and I haven't skated a lot of freestyle at all. So uh, we'll see what I come up with. I'm gonna have to call it after that shinner. It is, wow, that is a big shinner. Let me show that to you. <laughs> oh, yeah, never say that freestyle isn't as uh, hardcore as street, because you can get hurt pretty bad. Oh, all right, so um, I gotta get inside and ice that. What's my review of my freestyle skate park? Well, I thought it was very nostalgic because I used to skate on something like this all winter um, because I had to shovel part of my driveway, hope that it dried off before it snowed again. Usually it didn't, um, so I would skate little patches. It wasn't worth the effort to shovel a huge spot and then have it snow, you know? So I skated a lot of stuff like this. This is probably how I got into freestyle most of the way, but in that aspect, I really enjoyed it, had a lot of fun. The big problem is how slick it is. I definitely underestimated how slick it would get. There were times where I landed a trick pretty solid and the board just started to slide forward. Um, it makes it harder to really commit to landing. There's a lot of landings where I landed and was kind of like bracing for it to slip out and so I'm getting a little sketchy. I'll probably get used to it. But uh, yeah, I could kick turn without lifting my front truck at all. Just kind of slide back and forth and start to go, and then the back truck was starting to slide around too. Um, not great. It's been kind of wet and dreary today. Um, it feels like it's about to rain actually, so hopefully bakes in the sun for a couple days and it'll dry out a little bit. I'm really hoping, but I guess time will tell on that. So uh, that's it for now. Hopefully you'll see this a lot more in the future. Maybe I'll do some more freestyle trick tips and I'll actually be using this thing. Um, I'm definitely going to be skating it, whether I'm filming or not. It might just be on, uh, I'll post it on Instagram or something like that. You know, check me out on there, follow me on there. I'll probably post some tricks and stories and stuff from time to time if you're into that. But that's it for this time. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you were inspired to build something. Probably won't be this, but whatever. Uh, and hope you had a good time with this experimental and weird video. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.